So the car needs to know how much air is getting into the engine because the air is carrying the oxygen and it needs to balance the fuel with that air requirement. So how does the engine know? What are the mechanisms that a modern engine will use to determine the amount of oxygen it's got so it can supply the correct amount of fuel? So in this video, we're going to look at math and map sensors, the differences between them, and the rather ingenious solution manufacturers have come up to to tell them how much oxygen there is in the air as it's going into the engine. So your first question really is probably why aren't they just using an oxygen sensor? They've got oxygen sensors in the exhaust. Well, they need to be hot. They work by catalyzing there's a reaction that goes on between the oxygen molecules that releases voltage and it needs to be hot for that process to go on. The last thing you want in the intake is heat. You want the air to be as cold as possible. So they look for other ways of measuring the air going into the engine. So you've got the MAF, the mass airflow sensor, and you've got the MAP, the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Some cars use both to get a much more accurate opinion as to how much air there is going into the engine. There's advantages and disadvantages to relying on one or the other, but manufacturers got various ways of knowing what's going on in the engine. And by sniffing the exhaust and working out how well they did with their previous guesses, they can make better assumptions next time for the next cycle of combustion processes that go on inside the engine. So they've really come a long way from the old days where it used to be driven by a carburetor. They can now control very precise amounts of fuel that goes into the engine through those modern fuel injection systems. So the MAP, the Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor, measures the pressure inside the manifold. Now that will obviously alter depending on where you are in the combustion cycle. When the valves open and close, the engine is sucking the air in, the pistons are at different positions inside the combustion chamber itself, and whether there's a turbo fitted as well to the engine pushing that little bit more air in. That all affects the pressure in the manifold, so that's never a constant it will vary considerably from moment to moment within every aspect of the combustion process. The mass airflow sensor is quite interesting. It uses a hot wire or a hot film. The basic operating principles are very similar between them. So by heating up a wire, you'll notice it cools down when air passes over it. So the cooler that air is, or the faster that air is flowing, the greater the temperature drop will be. So just to illustrate it, we've got here a toaster so the element is really hot. And when I blow on the toaster, you'll notice the element stops glowing, it's cooling. So inside the engine, it's not obviously as hot as that, that could cause all sorts of problems, but the wire itself is trying to maintain a set temperature. So as it cools, as more air flows over it, the voltage needed to maintain that temperature needs to be increased. So by measuring the voltage that's going into that element to maintain that temperature. It's directly correlating to the amount of oxygen in the air. And the colder the air is, the more oxygen it carries. So that factor also carries over. So it's the basic principle of Ohm's law. You've got V equals I times R. So V is the voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance. So any change in one of those will have a bearing on that initial value of the voltage. So resistance increases as temperature decreases, and conversely, resistance will decrease as the temperature increases. So it's a very simple mechanism. You're obviously gonna run into problems if that wire itself starts to get soiled. It's not gonna be interacting as well with the airflow coming in. It can even affect the voltages going through that wire as well, or the hot film. So if your math sensor is starting to fail, you'll probably get poor running, poor tick over, flat spots in the engine, it might even trigger a check engine light and you'll often get some kind of error code coming up. It obviously requires a little bit of detective work tracking down where faults are in your car, but they're the classic symptoms of a bad math sensor. And as they age, they will degrade in their performance. If you've tuned the engine or increased the performance considerably, you may find that you're now operating beyond the scope of that original factory fitted one, and you've got to increase the capacity and change the ECU's tuning so it can interpret the signals it's getting more effectively and make those correct fuel calculations. So where an engine has got both MAP and MAF sensors, it can correlate the two sets of readings it's getting. It knows the pressure in the manifold, it knows the amount of resistance that's being created in the hot film 
or the hot wire. And from that, it can build a very accurate picture as to the amount of air going into the engine. So I want to keep this very simple. Just a few people have asked me about math sensors and how the engine knows how much air is going into it. So I just thought I'd put together this very simple video just to explain that. Please boot the like button if you found this a useful video. And I've lined this video up for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.